What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to episode 22 of The Rise of a Nation here with FC Edmonton. In the Canadian Premier League today it is the start of season 4. If you missed the end of season episode last episode of course do go check it out. I just noticed as we start this episode for some reason our team is now valued at 30 million. That can't be right we weren't valued at that much we were like 8 million last time I checked. Have player values gone up? Maybe a little bit. I don't know where that valuation is coming from. I think that's a value that actually is shown in this skin, but actually in Football Manager they stopped showing it, probably because it goes up crazily. But yes, we are back here. It is, well, the start of a new year. You can see our hot prospect is Chris Daniels, of course. Just as a reminder, he was one of the players we got in this year's intake, or last year's, I guess, as it is now, because it was in October. New season means it is April 22nd, 2022. It also means it's a World Cup year. Quite what the World Cup reshuffle is going to mean for us, I'm not entirely sure. Anyway, I guess with it being a new season, the first thing to start with is the transfers. And, well, we've not done a lot, is the, is the simple answer here. You'll notice that on the total amount in, we have 2.8 million. But if we just add up all these totals, clearly this does not add up to 2.8 million. So we'll start with the sales, then I'm going to explain the loans and the rationale. So on the outs, Mohamed Diallo has gone to Pacific FC for £60,000. It's a good little deal. He's a player who played a little bit for us. Obviously, was a hero at the very start of our first season, but kind of just fell away from there. Sarkaria and Bruno Zebi also moved on. Two players who were asking for more football. I couldn't give them it regularly, unfortunately. They've both hopped over the border to the USA. And, uh, well, then we come on to the loans. And the loans are where these fees are coming from. Um, in terms of just a few initial loans, uh, I did originally loan out Oyamada and also Karata, but I ended up recalling them both just because I think they're both kind of going to be useful in the first team, particularly Oyamada, who, of course, is part Canadian, the Japanese international centre-back, will actually be starting today in what I believe might be his live commentary debut. The other player, Karata, we ended up recalling. But with the exception of these two, the rest of these players all loaned out there's uh, various younger players here I guess the notable one would be Solomon uh, who we've loaned out purely because we didn't have room to register him into our team due to a new signing in the centre-back department which we'll talk about shortly that said by the end of next year we're going to be well no, no longer worrying about the foreign player limit because a lot of our players will be at that point Canadian citizens and uh, well hopefully I assume he doesn't completely decline as a player between then and now he will be part of the first team once more. But yes, that big sum of money comes from loan fees and monthly loan fees at that. Now, of course, last season, financially, we struggled as a club. We uh, we lost a significant chunk of money. I mean, you can see last year we lost £1.3 million. That was before, of course, the new stadium was agreed to be built. And we talked a little bit about that last episode, but essentially the club have taken out a loan which you can see here, which is £100,000 a month we're having to pay back. And that is on top of what we were paying previously. So, of course, this big decline here was not good. Um, so we have cut our wage costs by about uh, £5,000, which is pretty good, all things considering. Um, if we just look, actually, at the transfer histories and the outs, we did release some players. And a few contracts were relieved as well. And then on the ins this year... We kind of just spent money sh smoothly and well, sh sharply, I guess, on not big fees, basically. We, we were smart spenders, which is a rarity for us. But um, yeah, with all these deals going on, um, basically it left us in a situation where uh, we needed to get a fl well, uh, basically money into the bank somehow. Because between us losing money last year and the new loan, we were going to be losing money a lot. And well, you may have noticed if we just look at the loans that we've done, uh, a lot of these contain monthly fees. So Gaffer has gone on loan until the end of next season to Valor FC. Um, he's a good little centre-back. He's still got plenty of time left on his current contract. It's a two-year deal, which is going to total £1.2 million in fees over the next two years. I mean, maybe you can see where we're going with this. Basically, I'm using these loans, particularly these ones with larger monthly fees, to hopefully cover our finances. Now, Telfer and Gaffer have gone on two-year loans. So between them, that loan, those two loan deals are going to be worth in the region of £2 million. And then, well, as you can imagine, the rest of these all one-year deals, all with just smaller monthly fees, are just going to add up over time. Players like Goldhar is going on loan to York 9, a good little uh, talented Canadian centre-mid. Atardo has gone to York 
York 9. Again, they're paying all his wages. We're getting £20,000 a month from him. And, uh, well, over time, I'm hoping that these loan fees are going to offset the losses we made last year. We had to restructure financially somehow to keep ourselves propped up. This is how we've elected to do it. And I feel like it's going to work in our favour. So we did make some signings on the end, so we should actually talk about them. But uh, hopefully that logic behind the loanings makes sense. Telfer was a tough one, actually, to loan out. But when the loan offer came in, I kind of weighed things up. And for a backup left mid to be receiving, well, three quarters of a million pounds over the next two years... It kind of just made sense. Anyway, on the ins, Liam Fraser, of course, joined us. We knew this deal was done, was on loan with us last year, training him to play centre-back. He is Soria's um, kind of successor, I guess is the way I'm looking at him. The next player we signed is this guy, Amy B. Zambler. That's definitely not how you say his name. I want to set him a nickname because I'm going to get it wrong. We're going to call him ABZ because it sounds good. It, so it sounds a bit like a rapper name, doesn't it, really? But ABZ here... Uh, he is an Ivorian international who we've signed from ASEC. Now, if you're a long-term Work the Space fan, you might think back to the Lewis save four years ago. You might remember ASEC. They're a club I always recommend you check out. They produce some fine regents. This guy we signed for £13,000. That is an absolutely crazy bargain. He's already capped internationally at centre-back. 20 determination, really, really good physicals. Would like him to get a teeny tiny bit faster, although you can see he's already been working on his pace. Um, but it is this addition here of ABZ, which is the reason that Solomon has ended up heading out of the club. Anyway, a few young prospect signings. The first one here, Thomas James. He's now on loan at Charleston. Uh, Belgium, under-21 international, also part Canadian. We have a few signings from our academy. We have uh, Van de Wege. Today. That's definitely not how you say his name, but he's one of them. Hooper as well, two players who I just elected to get rather than risk other clubs, uh, clubs poaching our academy players. The next player we signed is Jorge Acevez who is a American centre mid, only 15 years old, just a low risk transfer basically was the logic behind this guy. He's not got Canadian nationality, but he looks very, very good at centre mid. He's only 15. I think it kind of it tells its own story why we've decided to go for him. He looks very, very good. And at 15, obviously loads of room to improve. The last signing we made just a bit of strength in depth at the centre-back department. We picked up Peter Shale here, who I do like quite a lot. I realised that I was looking for the release players and I couldn't see them. It's because we actually have to go back a year. But you can see here, um, Kareem Moses left us, Walton left us, Amiobi has left us. To join us as a scout. So, um, yeah, we're all winners. He's not a particularly good scout, but I'm willing to look beyond that. He's going to enjoy his retirement here at Edmonton, and that obviously did help us cut just a little bit of our wages that I talked about before. It does mean, in terms of our squad for this year, this is the class of 2022. We are at a 26-man squad with a few players you can see here on the younger side of things. Of the players to keep an eye out for, Elson Leon is definitely one. He joins us as our backup left midfielder, really. Um, he can play there pretty well. Obviously, with Telfer going out on loan, I needed a ready-to-go replacement. This guy, a product of, well, originally Victoria's Academy, but he's joined us. He's played, you know, a number of years at our junior level. Of course, these games not actually in the Canadian Premier League. They've been in our under-21 team. He's done very, very well for them. Vim has finally come back. He's had a number of loan kind of deals this guy was on loan at Charleston last year he developed a lot in that time at 19 years old a very consistent striking player he is the successor of sorts to Amiobi Adam Bill joins us who's a very very talented player was on loan at York 9 last year currently training him to play the deeper left midfielder position but at 17 lots to be excited about this guy uh, you can see here he is part Canadian and uh, well of course a few more familiar names perhaps we have Mosavat. Um, who looks absolutely superb at centre mid. Hopefully he can continue his development. And Bogdanovic, um, a player who we kind of called on a little bit towards the end of last year. He's back in the team this year. Of course, at 17 years old, a really, really, really established player at under 20s level for Canada. I really like the look of him. I love his headband. I guess they're the big things. Obviously, we also have Kevin Williams of the younger players, one we've not really talked about, but... Yeah, I think this might be the year of Kev. It might be the year of the Kev. Um, to start the year, I'm going to start with Connor James just because he was superb for us last episode, you might remember, against Halifax. But we don't really have an out-and-out -out number one goalkeeper this year. 
So this is the team that we have. It's quite a young squad um, with a little bit of experience in there, but I do feel like we've now hit a point at the start of season four where the team isn't really recognizable as the Edmonton team we inherited. As you saw from our transfer dealings, we've not done a great deal. We've moved a few players on, loaned a few players out, promoted players from our youth team. And this is the squad that's going to start today's first game of the season in El Clasico against Cavalry. It's going to be Connor James in goal at 26 years old. He's improved a lot and looking very, very good. Fraser is going to play at centre-back for us. Not playing Ramon Soria's position just yet, but over time I think he will earn his spot to play that ball-playing defender on support role. Soria coming into the last year of his current contract... We'll keep an eye on his physicals. They are already starting to fade away, but really just an unsung hero for us. You can see just consistently played 20 plus games for us and always performed well. He has, as you can see here, already got his staff attributes. I'd like to sign him as a coach, even though he's not a very good coach. Um, but right now he's kind of still happy being a player, so we don't intend to get rid of him just yet. Oyamada is going to make his live commentary debut at right centre-back, which is great to see. Um, you'll notice his jumping reach has shot up lately. I don't know if this is just me who's experienced this, but in my experience this year in Football Manager, jumping reach just jumps up at times quite crazily. And you can see oyamada has gone through a bit of a growth spurt. He went from 9 to 10 in jumping reach uh, two years ago, and then in the last two months... We've gone from 10.2 to 12.2. I love to see it. It's the big weakness in his game. If he can overcome that, I feel like the Japanese international might be just one of the first players on the team sheet every single day of the week. Anyway, at centre defensive mid, we have Shandell Senior, of course. He is not far away from being Canadian. 87 days away, so come the full season, he will be ready. And at that point, we might even recall Solomon, the Jamaican centre-back we've got out on loan. Lovett is going to be playing out on the left-hand side of the midfield, with Telfer out of the team on loan, with all that money coming in for him. Lovett is going to be relied on quite a lot. Out on the right, we're going to go with Marcel Ruiz, of course. Last year in pre-season, he improved a hell of a lot. This year... Not quite so much. A few teams rumbling around with some interest in him. Um, he did try and force a move during the offseason. We said, nope, you're staying here. At least for now, he's, he's accepted his fate and he's happy to still play for us. We're going to play K at centre mid and he's going to play, of course, alongside Marshall, um, who is still yet to become natural at centre mid. Hopefully one day he can achieve that. It feels like we've been training him in that forever. And then up top for today's game, we have Nick Daly. And for the first time in three years, the Duck is ready on the first game of the season, which is good news. Hopefully he can stay fit to start this year and just be a very, very good player for us, of course. On the bench, we've got plenty of options. We've got uh, Kofi Opare, um, who can slot in the experienced centre-back. We've got Caden Chung, who we are going to be looking at as our sole right-back option in the team, of course, can play right midfield. On the left-hand side, as I mentioned, Elson Leon. Big season for this guy. Expect big things. He's got big boots to fill in Telfer. Let's see if he can do it. Carlos Mora doesn't start today by virtue of the fact uh, we're at the foreign player limit. You can see during the summer, or rather the winter break, uh, he made his international debut for Paraguay, which is absolutely fantastic. Deshaies is currently coming back from injury. Do I want him on the bench? Probably not. Tell you what, we'll bring Mosavat into the team there. Edwini Bonsu, last year of his contract, he's fallen off a little bit as a player as of late, but he's still good for a spot on the bench. And of course, we also have Jordan Hamilton, our resourceful and flexible striker, who, well, if we need him to, may well be required to take and make an impact off the bench. If we just look at the season preview, it's worth just looking at this here. Um, you can see we are the favourites to win the league. In terms of key players, Carlos Mora and Ruiz are considered the big two players in the league. And then in terms of the Media Dream 11, you can see here we have plenty of representation. Our backup goalkeeper, Kevin Williams, is the goalkeeper. ABZ is in at centre mid, uh, or rather centre back. Interestingly, Gaffer, who we've loaned out to Valor, also p appears in the team. I like the look of this guy. He's very good with the ball at his feet. But as a centre back, he kind of lacks a little bit of the aerial ability and, well, just well rounded physicals and mentals that I would like. Um, so whilst he is a very good player, I definitely think he's worth the £1.2 million we're getting per year for him, even if he's in the Media Dream 11. Love it for us slots in at left back, oddly enough. Barboza is a player representing York 9 at right back. In the midfield, Gutierrez for Halifax is alongside Mosavat, Deshaies and, of course, Mora. Ruiz out on the right. And at the moment, it is Nick Daly considered the best striker in the league. If we just look here at the fees that have been paid for various teams this year... 
or by various teams this year, you can see, by comparison to lots of other teams, we've not been particularly big spenders at all. In fact, uh, the first three times we appear here are players that we are selling on. You can see Pacific have spent a fair amount of cash, including on our player, of course, Diallo. Um, but yeah, it's been interesting to note uh, just the deals that have been going on. You might, might remember Timo Teo. He was a player we actually had on trial with us once upon a time. He ended up going to Cavalry, played a few years for them, and now he's made a £300,000 move to Pacific FC. Might live to regret the day that we didn't take him on after his trial. Anyway, shall we get into today's game? It's the first game of the season. We're at home for it. Of course, we want to do well in the spring split this year, uh, especially with the knowledge in our mind that during the autumn split and the autumn season, we are going to be in continental contention. Looking at their team, a few players they've got here who are regens. The first they've got, Henry Zuma, looks like a very, very good little centre defensive mid. And they've got Skanga here, playing out on the right, 19 years old. He looks really blooming good. Former Whitecaps Academy player, technically gifted. Pacey as hell too. And, uh, well, that's that's the pick of the bunch when it comes to their players. Uh, you can see, actually, Alan Zebby making his debut at left-back for them. Our former player, we sold him to Forge for £75,000. Considering he just moved on for a free, I feel like we did quite well to get that much money for him. But anyway, let's get into this, shall we? It's a big game against Cavalry. It's a big day for us. What can we do? That is the question. I'm hoping we can get off to a convincing little win here. I'm very, very happy with the squad that we have. Obviously, with the likes of Kareem Moses and Amiobi leaving the team, you know, well, in the case of Amiobi retiring and in the case of Moses, he didn't want to stop playing football. I did try and sign him as a coach, but he wasn't interested. We're very much a team in a bit of transition now. You know, we, it's kind of the next generation of players breaking through. And, well, with a lack of signings during the summer, it's a fairly familiar squad, which is kind of unusual by my own standards. I, I feel like I'm known for having a bit of a high turnover of players, perhaps. Anyway, they're looking to hit us on the break here. You might have seen when they were setting up, they're kind of playing this 4... I'll call it a 4-5-1, really. It's a very defensive system with two centre defensive mids, clearly looking to hit us on the break. We're going to have to be wary of them. And, well, let's see what we can do here. Shandell Senior and Marshall having their own little game. Marshall creates some space, can't quite thread through the ball. Soria reads it, and we come again, though. Ruiz cutting inside now with Marshall. Could give it back wide to Ruiz. Goes back to Kay, who passes it forward to Marshall. Pings around. St. Duck wins it. Marshall smashes it home. And, uh, well, he starts this season as he ended last year. Alex Marshall really did turn up big in the kind of, you know, playoffs against Halifax. And he's starting off this season with a superb little goal, the number 98. Really involved in the play early on here. Passed around. I feel like Duck deserves an assist for the tackle he's put in, but he's not been accredited with it. And, uh, well, first goal of the season to that number 98. He's made that number his own. It would feel wrong for him not to be wearing the number 98 now, it feels like, in a lot of ways. Anyway, Marshall to put in the ball. Speaking of the devil, Carducci this time does collect. Carducci in goal for Cavalry has been one of the standout goalkeepers in real life so far this season in the Canadian Premier League. A very good young Canadian goalkeeper. Um, we'll have to well keep an eye out for him. I expect him to make big saves for them today. Cue the commentator's curse, maybe. Unfortunately, not at that time of asking. An effort from range by Marshall, unfortunately, saved away. Given how they're playing with two defensive midfielders kind of sitting off our team, um, it gives us lots of time just to pass around the ball here. Zuma's about to get bucked. What's he going to get given? That did not look like a red... Apparently he... Sorry, what? That that did not... I want to watch that again. They're down a man. Henry Zuma's gone off. I do not know how that was a red... Just... Let's watch this in 2D. Uh, in 3D. I mean... Thank you, ref. I guess. Did he... I mean, literally not a red card. Nick Dady's through in the next highlight. Probably should be banging that in. Love it. Show us what you're made of. On his left peg. Dispossessed. I mean, if the last one was a red card, surely that was a penalty referee. Unfortunately, he's not given it. But with that sending off and us already looking dominant, this should be a game now that we just can see out relatively comfortably. Love it's down this left-hand side for us. The number three lays it to Duck, who drifts out wide. Cuts inside. Was that a penalty? Apparently, that was a perfect tackle by Torres Lopez. You can see Halifax taking the lead against York 9 in their game there. 
Whilst we're favourites this year, it's kind of been interesting to see Forge made second favourites, a team that have very big spending because of their huge stadium and just big revenue streams, but we've not really seen them challenge in the league. Maybe this will be their year. Love it. Crosses in. Ruiz. What a touch. Oh my gosh. How's that not gone in? He's hit the crossbar. He's hit the post. It's somehow not found its way in. Oh my gosh. You can't get much closer than that, can you? <laughs> to scoring a goal. It has been all FC Edmonton in this half so far. Soria wants to keep the onslaught going. We're wide with Ruiz here. Could play through Duck. Would take an ambitious ball. Goes to Nick Daly, who has signed a new contract during the offseason. Did mean giving him a big wage rise, but he's committed a long-term deal to the club. And, well, love it. It's lovely little finish there. Ruiz with the assist from right midfield. And not a bad finish for a player who's debatably more naturally a left-back than he is a left midfield uh, kind of player. But, yeah, nice little switch play. Love it's found acres of space, but a really tidy little finish here. Could Carducci have done better in goal? Almost certainly, but we're not going to complain about that one little bit. Two goals to the good. We're in cruise control. It's all coming up Millhouse. And well, oh yeah, Maddo, he's winning the ball in the air as well. Granted, he's completely unchallenged, but maybe he can continue his little growth spurt he's been going through and his little jumping reach spurt. Ruiz crosses it in. Duck, maybe there. Love it, hits it. Oh my God. I did not know he had that in his locker. We're three goals up after 25 minutes and with them being down a man, it feels inevitable that more goals are to come. Nick Daly to Marshall. Again, the two Jamaicans involved in the build-up play. Ruiz, controversially, not awarded the assist here. That is a clean strike, isn't it? On the half volley, just had to readjust his standing foot just a little bit. And, uh, well, two goals in the same minute for Danny Lovett. He's going for the five-minute hat-trick from left midfield. Could he get it now? K with the ball. Where's Lovett? Feed Lovett. Shoot! Shoot! No, don't shoot from there. He whips into Ruiz. Nods it back into the danger area. Ruiz again. He hits it, it's saved, and then the rebound <laughs> falls straight to Ruiz to make it four. I mean, hopefully this makes amends to the FC Edmonton fans for the shocking performance against Cavalry last year. Last season, in five meetings, I think we only won one or two. I think it was one win, one draw, and three defeats. I guess this is one way to issue an apology and also state our intent for this year. We have demolished them. Created so many opportunities. I mean, just look at the blue on the bar charts. It's painful to see. Unfortunately, now we've not scored in 15 minutes, and I'm a little underwhelmed by it, but at uh, half-time, 4-0. I mean, our fans can just have a massive party at this point. What a performance, boys. Just keep it going. More of the same, please. I'm almost tempted to do a double change and bring in Mora. You know what, Daly's not had the best of the games. We'll bring in Hamilton, and then we'll bring in Mora for K. Just to get some fresh legs. Why not bring on a few more star players in the team? Could be a good opportunity for Hamilton to get a goal to start his season off well. Maybe Mora to do one of his trademark runs from deep to get a goal. Of course, Lovitz is going to be looking for the hat-trick. Frano's already on a booking. They're about to have another sending off. Cavalry are down to nine. They are capitulating. It is a meltdown here. I mean, surely we're going to get a fifth here. Shandell Senior, he can hit them. He's dispossessed this time, although it falls to Mora. Oh my gosh, that was not far wide of the mark. He's been on the pitch ten minutes. Clearly he wants a piece of the action, does Mora. I mean, they're just changing their team around constantly here, trying to work out a setup that might work. I'm actually going to do something that might seem crazy. I'm going to get rid of one of our centre-backs. I want more. I don't want us to show any mercy whatsoever. We're going to bring in Ruiz and play... Uh, sorry, bring on Edwidi Bontu and play Ruiz down the middle. Just as an attacking midfielder. Why not? Just inflict more misery. It's not a conventional formation, but I feel like against nine men, we can just go for it now. Headed away here from this corner, only as far as Marshall... I mean, there's only 20 minutes left of the half and we've not scored. I'm going to demand more from the players. Edwidi Bonsu. I guess that was a ball to love it. It's gone a little bit behind the, the player there. He can go back to Fraser, who can definitely ping a pass from range here. Goes back to Lovett, who switches it to Edwinnie Bonsu on off the bench. What can he do? He puts it back to Lovett for the hat trick. He's been dispossessed, but he's going to get a chance from the penalty spot because allegedly that was a foul. 
Can he get an unlikely hat trick? Of course he can. No nonsense from the spot, straight into the bottom corner. We had a hat trick to start last season, if I remember correctly. We've got another one today. And if there was any doubts about, you know, maybe we needed to sign more players in the summer, maybe we should be, you know, focusing and improving. This result hopefully casts any doubts that our fans had to rest. You can see our attendance of 6,000 is a complete sellout as well, so really justifying that stadium expansion. Shandell Senior, free kick, saved away to the Duck. What can the Duck go? Goes back to Senior, crosses in. Ruiz is there! Carducci this time does actually make a save. To be fair to them, they have now had a shot. It wasn't on target, but they've had a shot. Two minutes left. Did Winnie Bonsu crosses it in. Remy Street heads it away. Only as far as Shandell Senior. Love it's out on the left, wants it. He's now got it. Where's he going to go from here? Back to Mora, who turns round his man and hits it. Oh my lord. He's like Gaffer. I know you don't want to start me because of the foreign player rules, but maybe I'm worth a nod. And well, maybe he is worth a, mod, uh, a nod with just. A finish like that that gets hammered home. The number 14, three players crows him down. They don't put in a tackle. He smashes it into the top corner. I mean, if it was embarrassing for Cavalry FC, it's a humiliation now. The referee blows the whistle and, well, gives them some mercy. 6-0 it finishes. The two sendings off definitely helped. But still, not, not a bad little performance, I feel like, to start the year. You can see here lots of our various lone players getting involved in the play, which is good. Um, of course, the big thing for them really is the fact that we are making good money off them all. Goldhar playing for Halifax at centre-backs is definitely a, a player we're going to have to be interested in and keep an eye on. You might remember Nick Daly went on loan to Halifax and we all know what happened to him. Maybe John Goldhar here can follow in his footsteps. Lovitz gets man of the match. Absolutely deserve that out on the left-hand side. He was superb. And, uh, well, if we just look at the league table, it puts us in not a bad position after one game played, it would be fair to say. Anyway, in terms of when we'll be back, it's a great question, which I haven't thought too much about. Um, I think we'll see who we get in the Canadian Championship. We might do the game against Pacific. I'm trying to think, where are we going to be in 10 games' time? The Valor game is going to be the last game of the spring split here. We'll play things by ear, but I imagine it'll be in June sometime, so in a month or so's time that we'll be back. We'll, we'll see who we get drawn against. We'll see if there's any super interesting ties that come along. Of course, with us now being in continental competitions this summer, I am kind of keeping just one eye looking ahead to those and thinking that they might, you know, become the focus of a lot of this season in terms of when we do episodes. So, yeah, we'll see how things go. If we're cruising along, it might be slightly later in June, maybe the start of July. But, um, well, hopefully I'll see you guys for it regardless. If you have enjoyed today's episode, drop a like on the video. Let me know what you make of our transfer business. I feel like ABZ for £13,000 is just an absolute bargain. And then the loan deals on top of that with the monthly fees, hopefully, are going to stop the trajectory of our bank balances dropping and dropping and dropping and dropping. I'm hoping that this year we can even it out just a little bit and will not have a repeat of last season because it did not make... For pretty viewing. Anyway, guys, that's going to wrap up everything from me today. If you have enjoyed the video, drop a like on it. If you've got any comments with regards to the series, of course, leave them down below. And other than that, it is me, Jack, and I'll talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out. <laughs>